couple months ago, I found this portable sandblaster on sale at Harbor Freight. I decided to give it a try, and for today's quick tip, I'm going to show you how or if it worked on a couple of metal projects that I'm working on. Welcome to Alley Picked and today's quick tip. If you're in the alley picking business like me, what a piece of junk. A sandblaster is a great way to remove paint and rust from metal during restoration projects using air pressure and a grainy like sand substance. But do you need to make a big investment in equipment and space if you're just gonna use it once in a while? What? Don't. There's two things that I know about sandblasting. Number one, you need an air pressurized gun to shoot or blast the abrasive media. Number two, the abrasives can vary depending on what you're blasting. If you're using something that's too aggressive, it can damage whatever you're refinishing. But if it's too light, it's gonna be ineffective. When I bought this, I wasn't sure exactly what type of sand or abrasive that I was gonna need for my project. And while I was at Harbor Freight, I ended up buying this bag of baking soda abrasive. The baking soda did seem like a good choice, but it wasn't cheap. It cost me over 45 bucks. For $47. Nice. Yeah. It's not harmful to the environment or hazardous to breathe in. That's the good news. The bad news, it's a very mild abrasive. It was kind of like sanding off a wood finish using 220 grit sandpaper. It'll work eventually. To really take off paint from an item quickly, you're gonna need to use something different. I bought this bag of Black Blast for only eight bucks at Menards, a big box store near me. Here you can see the difference from the baking soda. The Black Blast makes quick work of removing the paint. But always test it on an inconspicuous surface first to be sure that the underlying metal is not getting damaged. What a huge difference. The bad news is that this stuff is a lot more hazardous. Let me read the warning label on the back. Use proper protective equipment, abrasive resistant clothing, safety shoes, leather gloves, eye and ear protection, and an approved helmet. Avoid breathing the dust. Prolonged exposure to high concentration of dust may lead to depression of the pulmonary function. Use of an OSHA approved respirator hood is recommended. Now, I know they overhype this stuff, but that is the warning. So this is the label from the baking soda bag. It says maintenance formula. So if you're looking for a product that's gonna take paint off of something, I'd probably avoid anything that says maintenance formula. Now this stuff may come in handy for some other light duty project, but for the two projects that I showed you, like the sconce and the weather vane, I just wasted my money. Now for those of you who jumped ahead and skipped the whole video, shame on you. But I'll be nice and sum it up for you. This portable sandblaster and this black blast media, I have to say I give it a thumbs up. I was able to remove about 90% of the paint from this in maybe 30 minutes. A quick cleanup and it's gonna be ready for repainting. It is messy, so you're gonna wanna use a closed blasting cabinet or outside in a safe area where you can sweep up your mess. You can even filter out some of the debris and reuse the blast media. Thanks for watching Alley Picked and today's quick tip.